All right. We'll see how long my voice lasts. Um, normally I can make like a high pitched, like little squeak voice. Just uh, until I can tell if my throat has any issues or anything going on. And I can't make it right now. It just it goes just to like a whisper. So um, <clears throat> may not have a voice for very long, but I'd like to get some reading in since uh, it's around 5 o'clock. I'm, I'm already home, so I'm just doing uh, manual dialysis tonight. So no, I'm not using the cycler. I'm just going to do uh, probably like three or four exchanges. I'll probably do another one here in maybe like two hours. And then I'll do a few during the night. Um, but I'd really like to see if I can get on this a, a, a smaller sleep schedule so I stop getting up at 10. I hate getting up late. It's frustrating. But problem is it's just I'm so comfortable when I'm, when I'm sleeping. And my dreams have just been so intense and so fun that it gets kind of hard to want to go back to sleep. So the real life stuff is fun, but it's all it's, it's slow and not immediate. And unfortunately, I just I'm not used to that kind of thinking. So I'm used to thinking in the moment. Most of my life, I still remember all the times I used to get frustrated because my mind would just wander off to like millions of different places. But I've I've learned to get some control over that. But it's still. Um, all right. Uh, so I'm not really following the schedule anymore. Um, I think there's part of it is and it's, it's, it's kind of funny, but I'm terrified, scared because I know once I start the consistent lifestyle habits, like the, the big, the big ones, like my sleep schedule, if I follow the strict sleep schedule that I think would work well for me, uh, God, I it just, it's, it's, it's hard for me because I'm not used to actually doing stuff for more than half the day. I'm used to just wasting my whole day. And I'm like right at that little crossroad right now that it's just, it's, I'm ready to move forward. But oh, it's just so hard. Like I totally get why people get stuck and just do the same thing over and over again just because it's, it's what's, what's, comfortable it's what's knowable i know what's going to happen if i eat poorly like it's it's the the downside like it hurts doesn't feel good um i can't eat like i used to because uh, i used to just scarf everything down but it's just uh it's just different but fortunately that's what i'm striving for that's been the goal these last two years has been to Learn to change when I need to. Learn to adapt. And so, um, I just know that this next this next change is just going to be, my whole life is going to be completely different. And I just, I guess I haven't really thought that out yet. What it's going to be like every single day, just sleeping you know, just a few hours a day because really that's all I need. Usually when I wake up after like a two or three hour nap, I'm fully good to go. But I just, I'm, I'm so comfortable in that, that, that dream state, that feeling. It's almost like an addiction. It really, I'm addicted to sleep. I mean, almost everybody is. Almost everybody I know wants to always, always looking for that extra, that extra time. Like my, my grandma and my uncle, they sleep at least, uh, they try to sleep twice a day, sometimes three times a day. Um, my aunt is always do dozing off in the morning uh, when watching the news and uh, doing her puzzles and stuff. Um, so it's just, uh, man, it's just weird. It's weird being able to do things for several hours at a time without taking breaks if I don't want to. Because it used to be I could only do that with like TV shows, movies, video games, where I could just like, throw myself in there and I'm finding it like now it's a lot harder for me to convince myself to watch something or to, and I, I do it. I still do watch stuff, but it, because it's not, the, it's not the same. It's not like I'm just throwing my mind away for that time. I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking actively during that whole time. Um, 
find it thinking of ways that the Star Trek technologies make sense. Um, seeing things in the, in those shows that I haven't, I hadn't seen before. Um, ah, it's just, it's, it's, it's so different, but it's, it's fun, but it can be exhausting. So that's why I got to keep training myself to do this. Um, so I've decided since that the first, the, of course, the first two readings I've already read um, on the 10 year reading plan for the world, uh, the right books of the Western world. I'm just going to go ahead and read from the beginning book and maybe try to get like one or 200 pages in a day. Um, anytime I take like a break or something, and you can just slap on another 15, 20 minutes. Um, Cause really I, this is, I'm, I, the reason I'm having a bit of a struggle right now is because my head is in two different places. I want to be doing things um, like to, to test my endurance, like being able to read for several hours is just amazing. But like, I know I can keep pushing it further. And I have ideas if I could push it further, like doing a, like when I get into live streaming, if I can read for 24 hours, maybe do like a 24 hour live stream, it'd just be kind of fun. Just read the whole time. I, I used to do stuff like that, but I never, I never verbalized it. Like um, I remember the sixth Harry Potter book um, I borrowed from my friend's mom and I had to go, I had a field trip. Well, not a field trip. It was a, I was going on a plane to DC. Um, I think it was eighth grade, and uh, I borrowed that book the night before, and I wanted to I wanted to finish it before the, the, the flight, and so I ended up reading the whole book in eighteen hours, and so I just I know that I can I can push myself to keep going further and further. I just I keep doing other things that get my mind in other places. It's it's like that same feeling that I had when I just, I had no hope of going forward almost. I like, it's not that same feeling, but it's that same, like I'd rather be doing this because this feels more important, even if it's not. Um, but I know that once I get myself out there, that's, that's when I just, I kind of just continuously do it. So, um, let's see. One sec. Uh, okay. But yeah, so that's uh, that's just kind of what my feeling is right now. I've just spent so many years doing the laziest possible thing. Now that I'm finally learning what it's like to to be able to imagine and actually like do the do the work towards realizing what I imagine. Um, that's a big transition. Um, but I think the more I talk about it, that's what's been helping me is I, I usually, even if, I, if I'm not talking to anybody, usually I'm able to just at least verbalize what I'm feeling. And, um, the, the longer I do it, the more I get fed up with talking about it. And then eventually I just, I come up with a way to go about it and then I fix it. So it's all a matter of time before I finally get fed up. I'm pretty fed up right now, but um, my voice is lost and my legs are hurting pretty, pretty, pretty intense from the, the few squats that I did yesterday. So, um, protein it, protein it up, and then just eating a little bit less today, so that way I don't have to feel like crap. And then I just I need to get back onto a fasting schedule get on those vegetables, talk to my doctors the other day and we decided that it could be a, a good, a good benefit to switch my, some of my meat protein to vegetables. So, um, yeah, that's, that's just what I need to, I need to just focus on. So I guess tomorrow, I guess, yeah, tonight, if, I, if I'm hungry, I'll, I'll, I'll grab that cauliflower that's in the, in the freezer or mixed vegetables. I think it's mixed vegetables actually. I'll have that or I'll just try to hold off until the morning, find a way to keep my appetite peaked. So, all right.
let's go ahead and throw oops, uh, Internet Archive, uh, History, that one. That one. Here we go. Ah, uh, let's see where's my glasses. Oh, that's right, my glasses are over there. Uh, that's rock number two. Three. Two. Oh. glasses yeah plus there's also a couple of things that i want i'm gonna go ahead and look them up real quick uh just to kind of put it on my bucket list so the first one is uh oh no never mind i i, I want a bike so i need to get myself a bike so that way i can start doing a little less driving each day. And then I'd like to get uh, a projector, I think. I think that'll just, that'll be the, the simpler option. Um, projector would be nice. And then um, I want to get a gaming, lap, another gaming laptop, one with uh, more modern stuff. Um, so that way when I get a little further into this, I can start, doing some editing and stuff and I could do some uh, like video game gameplay and or different things like that. I can kind of expand my options for what I'm doing. So um, first I need to get that podcast started up though. So that's going to have to be tomorrow. Um, I'm going to use the voice recorder, 360 hours of space, uh, a voice space. So um I can do a lot of good stuff with that. And then go uh, do a second reading of the great books of the Western world on that, actually. It's always good to read things more than once, but what about reading it more than once at a time? So that'll be interesting. All right. Let's do a reedy weedy. Uh, let's back up. Zoom in. Zoom, 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 zoom. Okay. Looks good. So, great ideas. A Centopicon. I got to figure out the pronunciation for this. Centopicon. Pronunciation. Centopicon. Okay, interesting. I like Centopicon, honestly, but all right. Some people. General contents, volume one, you got the preface, the explanation of reference style, and then chapters one to fifty, Angel to Love. And then volume two, so that's I think the second book. Uh, that's going to be uh, volume three of the series. Uh, you have explanation of reference style. Uh, chapters 51 to 102, Man to World. And then Appendix 1, Bibliography of Additional Readings. Ooh, that'll be nice. Appendix 2, The Principles and Methods of Syntopical Construction. Inventory of Terms. Okay, so yeah, basically, what I'll, what I'll, the way I'll treat this is each book will be Cause this, this, I, I've been trying to figure out a way to make it more like something that, uh, that I'm more familiar with. I, I used to do the video game releases at GameStop, um, back, uh, probably 2000, like eight, probably 2009 to like 20, probably like 20, 2012, 2015, somewhere in there. So 
that's why I, I used to do that. I used to get so excited, but um, I still remember uh, back way back when uh, they didn't have um, or uh, when they started doing the expansion pack, uh, kind of that 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 sort of plan for like Halo Two and the Call of Duty games, the stimulus package and different things like that. And then the zombies for Call of Duty Black Ops, different things like that. So um, I used to love that shit, but I quit doing that. So maybe that's something I, that's a kind of a ritual that I should bring back just because it's such a common thing, but not, not for video game releases, but I should treat each new thing as like, it just got released for the first time. Cause really if I'm reading it for this t- first time, it's my first time becoming aware of it. So, um, interesting. So what this will be like the first book that I read was like the base game. It was just sort of like an introduction to everything. And then now, uh, I'm, I'm buying the add on packs. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the more detailed information. Um, and so this information, it's like, a. I'll call it like a multiplayer map pack because it's it's relevant to the whole series. Um, but uh, when I start doing the actual readings on starting in volume four of the series where it's like the individual writers, the individual authors, then uh, that'll be more like like cosmetics. Um like I've, I've gotten a brief understanding of the general ideas of the holistic sense of everything by reading the first, the, these first three volumes. And then um, now I'm going to get into the, uh, the nitty gritty of the different uh, perspectives of the holistic, like th- th- that aspect. So I like that. So this is DLC number one. Or no, this will be like a season pass. Uh, I like that better. Season passes are better. So I have two season passes. If I get through both season passes now, then I'll get access to like all this extra content as I go on. I know it sounds silly to think like that, but sometimes when it comes to, especially the really difficult stuff to read and like the, the stuff that you got to really like put your mental focus in. Cause like sports, uh, TV, uh, video games, there's really not a lot of effort to be put in except for like a first time player or first time user of the technology because you've never used it before. But as you use it more and more, you develop little shortcuts and tricks and stuff and you make things easier. And so, um, Yeah, that's so interesting. All right. The prince, uh, appendix two, the principles and methods of syntopical construction, inventory of terms. All right. Water. Ah, I should actually look these guys' names up just to see. So there's Mortimer J. Adler, editor in chief, William Gorman, general editor. The associate editors, Herman Burnick, Otto Bird, and Peter Wolf. The editorial staff, Robert Anderson, Aaron Bell, Saul Bellow, Joan Burnick, Seymour Kane, Robert Campbell, Frederick Camper, Joyce Connor, Mary Jane Deaches, Gordon Dupey, Raymond Ellingwood, William Gerhard, uh, Robert Hemingway, <laughs> I almost pronounced that Heman. <laughs> That's funny. Donald Holenhorst, Leonard Olson, Janet Pollock, John Sledge, William Sparks, Dorothy Hodson Vining, Ursula von Eckhart, Eleanor Frank White, Benjamin Zimmerman, Thomas Cosgrove, James Doyle, James Ellington, Daniel Fettler. Norman Atwood Garris, John Harmon, Gertrude Yeager, Jack Landau, Richard Lewis, Werner Lowe, Charles Nelson, sorry, I had to think for a second, 
uh, Heloise Olson, Mary Rees, Eola uh, Schofield, Shirley Shapiro, Margaret Stern, Assistant Editors, Virginia Colton, Ruth Gustafson, Biblio, 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 uh, Bibliographical Assistants, Marie Sachi, Robert Malam, Gladys Moore, James Vale, Executive Editor, George Bryson, Supervisors, Martha Dubois, Lorraine Heath, Joseph J. Roddy, Editorial Assistants, Rosalie Gittleson, Miyo Urakawa, and then Special Consultants, Arthur Hyman, Janet Calvin, Herbert Lamb, Milton Meyer, Joseph Schwab. Cool. Yeah. Hold on one sec. All right. All right, contents, preface, explanation of reference style, and then chapters 1 through 50. Angel, animal, aristocracy, art, astronomy, beauty, being, cause, chance, change, citizen, constitution, courage, custom and convention, definition, democracy, desire, Dialectic, duty, education, element, emotion, eternity, evolution, experience, family, fate, form, God, good and evil, government, habit, happiness, history, honor, hypothesis, idea, immortality, induction, infinity, judgment, justice, knowledge, labor, language, law, liberty, Life and Death, Logic, and Love. Preface 1. The Nature of the Syntopicon By calling this work a syntopicon of great books of the Western world, the editors hope to characterize its nature to indicate the function it performs. Hold on one sec, sorry. Um, get some of that background rain noise going. I just like to have the background noise. It's, it's, it helps me focus better. All right, sorry. Uh, the editors hope to characterize its nature, to indicate the function it performs in relation to the set as a whole, and to assert its originality as an intellectual instrument. The relation of these two volumes of the great ideas to the rest of the set is the key to the nature of the Syntopicon and its originality as an instrument. Apart from it, this relation, the great ideas, though to some extent readable in itself, does not perform the functions for which it was created to show that the 443 works which comprise volumes 4 to 54 can be seen and used as something more than a collection of books. The great books are preeminently those which have given the Western tradition its life and light. The unity of this set of books does not consist merely in the fact that each member of it is a great book worth reading. A deeper unity exists in the relation of all the books to one tradition. A unity shown by the continuity, continuity of the discussion of common themes and problems. It is claimed for this set of great books that all the works in it are significantly related to one another and that, taken together, they adequately present the ideas and issues, the terms and topics that have made the Western tradition what it is. More than a collection of books, then, this set is a certain kind of whole that can, that can and should be read as such. The great ideas results from the records such, re results from and records such a reading of the great books. The aim of this syntopical reading was to discover the unity and continuity of Western thought in that discussion of common themes and problems from one end of the tradition to the other. The syntopicon does not reproduce or present the results of this reading in a digest to save others the trouble of reading the great books for themselves. On the contrary, it only lays down the lines along which a syntopical reading of the great books can be done and shows why and how it should be done. The various uses of the syntopicon described in section three of this preface all derive from its primary purpose, 
to serve as a guide to the reading of great books of the Western world as a unified whole. The lines along which a syntopical reading of the great books can and should be done are the main lines of the con continuous discussion that runs through the 30 centuries of Western civilization. This conversation across the ages is a living organism whose structure the, the syntopicon tries to articulate. It tries to show the many strands of this conversation between the greatest minds of Western civilization on the themes which have concerned men in every epoch, and which cover the whole range of man's speculative inquiries and practical interests. To the extent that it succeeds, it reveals the unity and continuity of the Western tradition. It was with these considerations in mind that the editors called the great ideas a syntopicon of the great books, literally a collection of the topics which are the main themes of the conversation to be found in the books. A topic is a subject of discussion. It is a place at which uh, minds meet to agree or disagree, but at least to communicate with one another about some common concern. Just as a number of minds or what they have to say can be related by their relevance to a common theme. So a number of topics can be related by their relevance to a common term, a single concept or category which generates a number of problems or themes for discussion. Hence, this entopicon is organized first by a listing of the ideas that are the important common terms of discussion and then by an enumeration of the topics that are the various particular points about which the discussion of each of these ideas revolves. Hey, that can finally fell off. Uh, can of, I was drinking canned water last week. And I had to stop doing that because it's expensive. But the full title of this work, The Great Ideas, a syntopicon of great books of the Western world, thus indicates not only that its structure consists of terms and topics, but also that it functions as a guide to the great books from which its terms and topics are drawn. But the title may fail to indicate another equally important function which the syntopicon performs when it is taken together with the great books. By serving as a guide to the syntopical reading of the great books, it does more than transform them from a mere collection of books into a unified whole. It transforms them into a new kind of encyclopedic whole, a new kind of reference library, without in any way interfering with all the values the great books have as books to be read individually, the Syntopicon gives them a, the further utility of a unified reference library in the realm of thought and opinion. All right, pause for a sec. Ten. Ugh. I'm stop drinking these. Oh, yeah. Because of the traditional and proved importance of the thought and opinion contained in the great books, the Syntopicon and the editor's opinion creates an intellectual instrument which is comparable to, though quite distinct from, the dictionary and the encyclopedia. The dictionary is a basic reference work in the sphere of language. The general encyclopedia is a basic reference work in the sphere of fact, concerned with all matters ascertainable and the present state of historical and scientific knowledge. The Syntopicon, these two volumes taken together with the rest of the set, is a basic reference work in the sphere of ideas, comprehending the wisdom and understanding accumulated thus far in all major fields of inquiry. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, that's what I can do. Okay. Okay. Nope. Going to keep that one to myself. That's uh, a really good idea, though. Comprehending the wisdom and understanding accumulated thus far in all major fields of inquiry. As its utility is realized, it will... The, the editor's hope, take its place beside the dictionary and the encyclopedia in a triad of fundamental reference works.
Uh, all right. Two, the structure of the Syntopicon. The Great Ideas consist of 102 chapters, each of which provides a syntopical treatment of one of the basic terms or concepts in the great books. As the table of contents indicates, the chapters are arranged in the alphabetical order of these 102 terms or concepts from angel to love in volume one and from man to world in volume two. Following the chapter on world, there are two appendices. Appendix one is the bibliography of additional readings. Appendix two is an essay on the principles and the methods of syntopical construction. These two appendices are in turn followed by an inventory of terms. I like that because then that tells you how this is built. The 102 chapters. Each of the 102 chapters is constructed according to the same pattern. Each consists of five parts, an introduction, an outline of topics, references, cross-references, and additional readings. The inner structure of the Syntopicon is co uh, constituted by the order and relation of these five parts and by the integral relation of the inventory of terms to the 102 chapters as a whole. Oh, yeah, so good. Yeah, I need to stop drinking though. They're so freaking good though. All right. All right. So part one is an introduction. Each chapter begins with an essay which comments on the various meanings of the idea under consideration it t and takes note of the problems it has raised and the controversies it has occasioned in the tradition of Western thought. The introduction to a great idea is designed to serve as a guide to its topics and through them to the content of the references. For certain of the most important topics, it frequently provides in the words of the authors themselves, a foretaste of the great conversation contained in the passages referred to. The introduction usually expands on the necessarily brief statement of the themes or issues in the outline topics, outline of topics and furnishes some comment on the structure of the outline as a whole and on the relation of particular topics to one another. The introduction serves one, one other purpose. It indicates some of the connections between the idea it discusses and other great ideas, thus functioning as a commentary on the cross-references. In some cases, the introduction also calls attention to the way in which certain works, uh, excuse me, recommend, recommended, no gosh, I'm sorry, in the additional reading, supplement the references to the great books in the discussion of certain aspects of the idea under consideration. Two, outline of topics. In each chapter, the outline of topics follows the introduction. It states the major themes of the conversation to be found in the great books on the idea of that chapter. It exhibits the internal structure of the idea by presenting its topics in relation to one another. There are about 3,000 topics in the Syntopicon as a whole, an average of 30 to a chapter. Though the actual number varies from as few as six topics in a chapter to as many as 76. The 3,000 topics provide a statement of the scope and variety of subjects with which the great books deal in a substantial and significant fashion. Since the topics are divided among 102 chapters, according to the great ideas under which they fall, the user of this Syntopicon can find a particular topic by turning to the chapter on the idea, which is a central term expressed in the statement of that topic, or if not actually present in the phrasing of the topic, is implied by it. Almost all the topics involve one or more terms other than the name of the great idea under which they fall. Hence, by consulting the inventory of terms, the user of the Syntopicon can ascertain whether the particular subject in which he is interested in, or which he is interested, is represented by one or more of the 3,000 topics. As will be seen below, the prime function of the inventory is to enable the user of the Syntopicon to find topics in which he is interested and which he could not otherwise find except by examining the outlines of topics, chap chapter by chapter. Since the references to the great books are organized by topics, the individual topic, rather than a great idea, is the elementary unit of the Syntopicon. From the standpoint of the references, the great ideas are collections of topics. The same is true of all the other terms listed in the inventory of terms. For each of these terms, for each of these, one or more topics are 
the headings under which the discussion of the subject can be found in the great books. The user of the syntopicon must, therefore, always use a topic rather than a term to discover what the great books have to say on a particular subject. However, with the help of the inventory of terms, he can always use a term to find the topics which either state or approximately represent the subject of his interest. For the convenience of the reader, the outline of topics in each chapter is keyed to the pages of the reference section, which immediately follows. In the outline, the number to the right of a particular topic indicates on which page of the reference section it begins. References. The references are the heart of each chapter. As the introduction and the outline of topics are designated to help the reader use the references, so the references organized topically are, des are designed to enable him to turn to the great books for the discussion of the particular subject. For each topic, they locate, by volume and page, the relevant works and passages in great books of the Western world. There are about 163,000 references in the Syntopicon as a whole, an average of 1,500 to a chapter, though the actual number varies from as few as 284 references in a chapter to as many as 7,065. Oh my gosh. Under each topic, the references are arranged in the order in which the authors and their works appear uh, in the great books of the Western world. References to the Bible, which present, when present, are, are, are always placed first. The order of references enables the user of the Syntopicon either to follow the discussion of some theme through the great books of the historical sequence or to select particular authors or to the authors of a particular period according to his interest. Ideally, a syntopical reading of the great books in relation to any single topic should cover all the works or passages cited under that topic. Ideally, when a such a reading should proceed in the first instance, in the first instance at least, in the order in which the references are presented. Reading the materials in chronological order enables the reader to follow the actual development of thought on a topic. In many passages, later authors explicitly refer to earlier ones, and even more frequently, the expression of later views presupposes an understanding of earlier ones on which they are based or with which they take issue. But the individual reader may deviate from this ideal procedure in a number of ways, according to his particular interests. He may wish only to sample the materials referred to under a given topic, or he may wish to examine what a certain group of authors have to say on a particular topic. The reader may know sufficiently well the position of certain authors on the topic in question, and so many turn his attention to other authors whose works are cited there. Or he may wish to examine thoroughly the thought of certain authors while merely forming a general impression of what others have to say. The reference section is so constructed that it permits the reader, almost at a glance, to follow any one of a wide variety of procedures. A brief explanatory note repeated at the beginning of every reference section, gives the minimum necessary directions for going from the references to the passages to which they refer. For the sake of brevity, it offers only such information as is uniform for all the works cited. If the reader wishes complete information concerning the way in which each particular work is cited, he will find this set forth. By authors and titles in the explanation of reference style, which immediately follows this preface, and is also printed for the reader's convenience at the opening of volume two. The explanation of reference style contains a complete account of all the symbols and abbreviations used in the reference section and gives examples of the usual typographical form of the references. Only one further point requires comment here. In some chapters, a few topics contain no references. These topics serve in the outline as headings for other topics grouped analytically under them. The user of this Syntopicon who wants to know what the great books have to say on a particular subject and finds that subject represented by a topic without reference content will find in its subordinate topics references to the great books on various aspects of the general subject he has in mind. Cross-references. The cross-references follow the references in each chapter. They direct the reader to other chapters in which similar or related matters are considered. By relating the topics of one chapter to those of, another, of other chapters, the cross-references show the interconnection of the great ideas. In general, 
The order of the cross-references follows that of the outline of topics. Each entry of the cross-references indicates, by its phrasing, the subject of the topic in a given chapter, to which topics in other chapters are related or similar. The phrasing of the cross-references enables the reader to determine whether the topics in the other chapters mentioned are similar or related to the topic in this chapter. The related topics will usually offer a quite different set of references. The user of the syntopicon will find that topics in different chapters often resemble one another, both in their phrasing and in, their re in the references set forth under them. In a few cases, they are identical or almost identical, but similar topics will usually differ in their reference content because the meaning of a topic is partly determined by the idea under which it falls and by the surrounding topics which form its content context. Hence, in most cases, the reader who turns to similar topics in other chapters will find some proportions, some proportion of different re references. Additional readings. Great books of the Western world comprises 443 works by 74 authors. If we had the 77 books of the Bible, which are syntopically treated along with these published works, the number is 520. But this large number does not represent all the books which make signal contributions to the great conversation in the sphere of each of the great ideas. The list of additional readings, which is the last part of each chapter, is a list of books recommended as companions to the works and passages cited in the reference section. For the ideas and topics of each chapter, they supplement or amplify the discussion to be found in the great, the great books. They represent some of the works in the wider field of literature in which the great books occupy a central position. In each list of additional readings, the recommended titles are divided into two groups. First, works written by authors represented in great books of the Western world, and second, works by other authors. Each group is listed chronologically. Whenever they are available, translations of foreign works are suggested. The existence of English translations is always indicated by the use of English titles. These are usually accompanied by the title of the, in the original language. Uh, excuse me. I'm going to put the coffee back in the freezer. Okay. Um, the existence of English translations is always indicated by the use of English titles. These are usually accompanied by the title in the original language. The 102 lists of additional readings, each constructed for the idea and topics of a particular chapter, contain in all 2,603 titles by 1,181 authors. For the convenience of the reader, the authors and titles in the 102 separate lists of additional readings are compiled into a single list in a bibliography of additional readings, which is Appendix 1. See Volume 2, page 1,143. In the bibliography of additional readings, the author's names are in alphabetical order and the works of each author are listed alphabetically under his name. In addition, the bibliography provides useful information concerning authors and works, such as birth and death dates of authors, date and place of writing or publication, name of editors or translators, names of publishers, and names of standard collections in which individual works appear. A note preceding the bibliography explains the principles of its construction. The inventory of terms. The inventory of terms is an integral part of the syntopicon place for convenience at the end of volume two. The syntopicon is both a book to be read and a reference book. This table of contents set forth its contents as a book to be read, but since this is limited to listing the 102 Great Ideas, chapter by chapter, it cannot indicate the scope and range of the Syntopicon as a reference book. Inventory of terms... Oops. That's all I... Come on. Yeah. Uh, 
The inventory of turns performs that function. It serves as a table of contents for the Syntopicon as a reference book. The person who wishes to use the Syntopicon as a reference book in order to learn what the great books have to say on a particular subject must be able to find that subject among the 3,000 topics. The primary function of the inventory of terms is to enable him to find the topic or topics which clearly express or approximately represent the subject of his inquiry. It does so by, ins by citing for each term listed the topics. Oh, okay, so this is literally AI. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just limited because it's on a it's on, in a book it's in book form. The topics in which that term is a principal element, it cites these by giving the name of the chapter in which the topic appears and the number of the topic in that chapter. The reader can find the topic in which he is interested by looking in the inventory for the term or terms that would appear in a statement of the subject. The user of this syntopicon may have a broader interest that can be expressed in a particular topic. He may wish to examine the whole range of discussion of the basic concept, whether that be one of the great ideas or some other term. This may involve not one or two topics, but a large number, as is certainly the case for the great ideas and for many other important concepts as well. Since the inventory of terms cites all the topics in which each term is significantly involved, it, enabled the reader, it enables the reader to investigate the whole range of the discussion in the great books relevant to that term. Oh yeah, water. One sec, we're right back. Tap on the nose. up and finish some of this stuff so that way I can set up my dialysis stuff. I think I'm going to do the cycler actually just because it's easier to do my readings while hooked to that. Let's see. One sec. The reader can find the topic in which he is interested by looking in the inventory for the term or terms that would appear in a statement of the subject. The user of the syntopicon may have a broader interest that can be expressed in a particular topic. He may wish to examine the whole range of discussion of a basic concept, whether that be one of the great ideas or some other term. This may involve not one or two topics, but a large number as is certainly the case for the great ideas and for many other important concepts as well. Since the inventory of terms cites all the topics in which each term is significantly involved, it enables the reader to investigate the whole range of the discussion in the great books relevant to that term. Among the terms listed in the inventory are the names of the 102 great ideas. This does not duplicate the information furnished by the table of contents. For each of the great ideas, the table of contents locates only the whole chapter which deals with the great idea. Whereas the inventory of terms usually cites topics in many other chapters in addition to the chapter on that idea itself. For the reader who wishes to explore the discussion of a great idea as thoroughly as possible, the inventory of terms supplements the topics to be found in the chapter on that idea and even those mentioned in the cross references of that section. The 1800 terms in the inventory are listed alphabetically and for each term, the relevant topics are cited in the alphabetic order of the chapters in which the topics occur. Sometimes the topics are divided into two groups of primary and secondary importance. Within each group, 
The chapters are alphabetically arranged. The inventory is likely to present only one difficulty to the person who consults it in order to find a particular topic. The first step in the location of a topic is accomplished uh, when the reader turns in the inventory to the term that he, th he thinks is involved in a statement of the subject of his interest. But finding a number of topics cited there, he must choose among them. There are two ways for him to pr proceed. He can examine the topics one after another until he finds the one which satisfies him at two statement, as two statements of the subject, or two. He can use the names of the chapters in which the topics occur as a clue in f to finding the topic which states the subject of his inquiry. Since the content of particular topics is largely determined by the idea under which they fall, the chapter names will quite frequently prove a reliable guide. A brief note, at the beginning of the inventory of terms, ex uh, at the beginning of it, explains its construction and furnishes directions for its use. Nothing more need be said here of its structure or of its utility in making this topic on a reference book, but a word should be added about the significance in the in of the inventory in relation to the great ideas. The division of the Syntopicon into 102 chapters may give rise to this notion that its editors think there are only 102 ideas worth discussing. The number of really great, that is, primary or pivotal ideas may be smaller or larger than 102. That number represents an editorial judgment which was made in the course of constructing the Syntopicon. How it was reached is explained elsewhere, see Appendix 2, Section 1, but here it should be said that it does not represent a judgment by the editors that the 102 terms selected by them are the only concept or ideas which have notable significance in the tradition of Western thought. The inventory of terms manifests exactly the opposite judgment. It's 100 or 1800 words and, or phrases expresses important concepts. Though many of these will immediately be seen to have much less comprehensive or critical meaning than the 102 major terms of the Sumtopicon, they all have the general currency or importance in some special field of inquiry. They also represent notions or topics which fall under one or more of the 102 great ideas. The Principles and Methods of Syntopical Construction The essay on the principles and methods of syntopical construction is Appendix 2. It is intended as a, uh, as a supplement to this preface. The foregrowing brief descriptions of the parts of the Syntopicon indicate its structure, but they do not explain how it was constructed. The work of creating such each part of the Syntopicon raised many difficult intellectual and editorial problems. These problems, and especially the principles and methods by which they were solved, may be of interest to the reader after he has, has had some experience in using the Syntopicon, but probably not before. The editors decided to make the essay on the Syntopicon's construction an appendix to the work rather than burden the preface with an account of the methods employed and an exposition of the principles adopted. While freeing the preface from the burden of fuller explanations, they nevertheless hoped to provide systematic uh, answers to questions which might arise in the reader's mind as a result of using the Syntopicon. Three, the uses of the Syntopicon. The foregoing discussion of the nature and structure of the Syntopicon has expressed the purpose for which it was designed, but it does not fully state all its possible uses. There are four basic types of usefulness which the editors hope the Syntopicon will have. Two of these have already been mentioned. It has been pointed out that the Syntopicon is both a reference book and a book to be read, but the Syntopicon is also intended to serve as an instrument of a liberal education through the aid it can give to a certain kind of study and teaching of the great books. It is not inconsistent with the primary function as a reference book that it should, in addition, prove to be an instrument of research and discovery. The Syntopicon is a reference book. The description in section two of the, this preface of the parts of the Syntopicon and their function and the structure of the whole includes some indicated indication of how it may be used as a reference book. Here we are concerned with its general character as a reference book, reference work, as evidenced by the types of questions it has been constructed to answer. In contradistinction to books of other sorts, reference books are designed to help the reader who comes to them with inquiries on particular subjects. If in addition to answering the questions he brings, 
They raise further questions in his mind and excite him to further inquiries, which in turn they are able to satisfy. They are more than answer books. They are pedagogues, leading the mind from question to question in the pursuit of learning. Reference books at their best perform as educa an educational function, not simply by answering questions, but by arousing and sustaining inquiry. Nevertheless, the field of any reference book is defined in the first instance by the types of questions it is able to answer. The specific type of inquiry in which the subtopicon is able to satisfy and which gives it a special character as a reference book can be formulated by the question, what do the great books have to say on the subject? This is not the only question that the subtopicon is designed to answer, but it is the primary one. The topics are the units though through which the syntopicon functions as a reference book, since it is under the topics that the reference references to the great books are assembled, and it is through reading the works or passages recommended by these references that the person who consults the syntopicon finds the answer to his question. What do the great books have to say on this subject? The range and variety of the particular subjects of inquiry on which the syntopicon can be consulted is indicated quantitatively by the number of topics and terms. 2,987 topics are covered with 102 chapters. 1,798 terms are listed in the inventory of terms. Qualitatively, the range and variety of the inquiries the Syntopicon is able to satisfy can be seen only through the examination of the topics, chapter by chapter, or by an examination of the chapter titles in the table of contents and the words or phrases listed in the inventory of terms. To every question expressed in this way, what do the great books have to say on this subject? The syntopicon helps the reader to discover the answer for himself. By a syntopical reading of the great books in the light of the topics and guided by the references assembled under them, this fact distinguishes the syntopicon from all other familiar reference books, which they contain with, within themselves the answers to the questions on which they are consulted. The syntopicon does not contain the answers, but only a guide to where the answers can be found in the pages of the great books. The references which constitute this guide do not tell the reader what the great books have to say on a particular subject. They only tell him where to read in the great books in order to discover for himself the thought and opinion, the imagination and emotion in which the authors of these books have expressed their minds on this or that particular subject. For this reason, it was said earlier in this preface that only when it is taken together the, uh, with the great books themselves does this syntopicon create a reference library in the sphere of thought and opinion. I like this. Ah. While this is true for the primary type of question, which the syntopicon is designed to answer through its systems of references to the great books, it is not true, at least not to the same extent, for the subordinate types of questions now to be considered. The question, what themes have been discussed in the tradition of Western thought under this idea, is answered in the first instance by the outline of topics and the chapter on each other, on each of the great ideas if the reader becomes interested in the actual content of the discussion under one or more of these topics, he will then be asking the primary sort of question to which the references assembled under the top, these topics, provided the beginning of an answer and the great books, the fullness of it. And the, yeah. the question to which of the other great ideas is this idea related and how is it related is answered by the cross references in the chapter on each of the Great ideas. The cross references enumerate the topics in other chapters which are related to the topics covered by the idea in question. The introductory essay on the idea also usually contains references to other introductions in which related ideas are considered. By reading the introduction and examining the cross references, a person can use this in Topicon to discover, at least initially, the connections between one great idea and, the, and others. The question, what books other then those published in this set contain important discussions of this idea. It is answered to some extent by the additional readings listed in the chapter on each of the great ideas. By the additional readings listed in the chapter on the, uh, yeah, sorry, 
The question, what is the history of the idea, its various meanings, and the problems or controversies it has raised, is answered at least initially by the introduction to the chapter on each of the great ideas, here as before, if the reader's interest is aroused to further inquiry, the topics, the references under them, the passages in the great books referred to, and the books listed in the additional readings, provide a means for a fuller exploration of the idea and varying degrees of thoroughness and ramification. Two, the Syntopicon is a book to be read. The, with respect to its 102 essays on the great ideas, the Syntopicon is first of all a book to be read. These essays are arranged in alphabetical order of the ideas, but they need not be read in that order. Each is intended to be intelligible in itself, independently of the others. The reader can therefore begin according to his interests with any one of the introductions uh, to the great ideas. No matter where he begins, he will find that the reading of no other introduction is presupposed. But he will also find that each introduction traces some of the connections between the particular idea uh, which it treats and other great ideas. With whatever idea he begins, the introductory essay will at least su suggest other ideas as subjects of related interest. These in turn will turn his attention to and may arouse his interest in still others. Since each of the great ideas is directly or remotely related to many others, perhaps to all, through a network of connections radiating from each idea as a point of origin, the reader, starting at any point in the realm of thought, can explore the whole of it by going from any one idea to all the rest by circuits or pathways of his own choosing. The reading of one or more introductions should also turn attention to the outline of topics in these same chapters and through them and the references organized under them to be to the great books themselves. As integral parts of the Syntopicon, the introductions to the great ideas are not intended to satisfy the reader's interest, but rather to arouse it and then direct it to the great books. The name introduction specifies the function these essays were designed to perform. When they function effectively as introductions to the outlines of topics and the references, they implement the use of the Syntopicon not simply as a reference book, but as an instrument of liberal education. Three, the Syntopicon is an instrument of liberal education. The Syntopicon serves the end of liberal education to the extent that it facilitates the reading of the great books and beyond that, the study and teaching of them. To make the nature of this educational contribution clear, it is necessary to distinguish between the integral and syntopical reading of great books. Integral reading consists simply in reading a whole book through. But syntopical reading does not consist simply in reading parts of a book rather than the whole, it involves the reading of one book in relation to, to others, all of them relevant to the consideration of the same topic. One sec. Okay. In some cases, as the references show, whole works are cited along with passages from other works which may be as short as a paragraph or as long as a chapter or a series of chapters. For the most part, a syntopical reading consists in reading passages of varying length rather than whole works, but the point re remains that the essence of syntopical reading lies in the juxtaposition of many authors under the same topic and, in consequence, the reading together of their works in whole or part. Neither of these two types of reading can never be a substitute for the other, nor can it be taken, nor can either be taken as sufficient than itself. On the contrary, each is incomplete without the other. Those who begin by reading in the great books and reading them syntopically must eventually read at least some of them integrally. In integrally. Those who have already read some of the great books through must read them syntopically to discover what an integral reading of the great books seldom reveals, except perhaps to the most mature students or conscientious scholar. For each of these two sorts of persons, the beginning reader and the more advanced student or scholar, the syntopicon functions differently and the syntopical reading of the great books serves a different function, different purpose. Ah.
Okay. For the beginning reader, in the extreme case, a person who has read none of the great books, a syntopical reading done in accordance with the references under every uh, even a few topics works in three ways, initiatively, suggestively, and instructively. It works initiatively by overcoming the initial difficulty that anyone faces when confronted by a collection of books as vast and, in a sense, as overpowering as great books of the Western world. The problem is where to begin and in what order to proceed. There are many solutions to this problem, usually in the form of courses of reading based on different principles of selection, but these usually require the reading of whole books or at least the integral reading of large parts of them. It is a matter of general experience that this kind of solution seldom achieves the intended result. A syntopical reading of the great books provides a radically different sort of solution, which promises to be more effective. It initiates the reading of the great books by enabling persons to read in them on the subjects in which they are interested and on those subjects to read relatively short passages from a large number of authors. It assumes only that every edu edu educable mind has some interest in one or more of the themes, problems, or ideas on which the great books touch. A syntopical reading may also work suggestively, starting from a reader's existing interest in a partic particular topic. It may arouse or create an interest in other topics related to those which initiated his reading in the great books. The syntopical reading of a collection of authors under a particular topic may also impel the reader to look beyond the passages cited, except when they cite whole works, the references cite passages which necessarily exist in a context. Ultimately, the context of a whole book, few of the, these passages are absolutely self-contained. For few of them, can it be said that it will be finally satisfactory to read them without looking further into the author's thought. Hence, proceeding along the natural lines of his own interests, the reader may be led from the reading from reading small parts of certain books to reading larger parts and eventually to reading whole books. If this process is repeated, each syntopical reading may occasion and stimulate a more and more extensive integral reading of the great books. Working initiatively and suggestively, syntopical reading opens the great books at the pages of maximum interest to the individual and by the force of the passages read and their dependence on context, carries him from reading parts to reading, the, reading whole works. Syntopical reading works instructively when it guides the mind in interpreting and understanding the passages or uh, works being read. It does this in three ways. First, the topic in connection with the passages passage is being read serves to give direction to the reader in interpreting the passage. But it does not tell him what the passage means since the passage cited may be relevant on the topic to the topic in any one of a number of ways. Hence, the reader is called upon to discover precisely what relevance the passage has to the topic. To learn to do this is to acquire a major skill in the art of reading. Second, the collection of a number of passages on the same topic, but from different works and different authors, serves to sharpen the reader's interpretation of each passage read. Sometimes when passages from the same book or, uh, or author are read in sequence and in the context of one another. Each becomes clearer. Sometimes the meaning of each in a series of a series. <clears throat> of contrasting or conflicting passages from different books or authors is concentrated, uh, sorry, accentuated when they are read against one another. And sometimes the passages from one author, by amplifying or commenting on the passages cited from another, material help the reader's understanding of the second author. Third, if the individual does a syntopical reading of the great books under a number of distinct op uh, topics, the facts that the same passage will often be found cited under two or more topics will have its instructive effect. As relevant to distinct topics, the passage must have an amplitude of meaning which the reader will come to perceive when he interprets it or uh, somewhat differently in relation to different topics. Um, such multiple interpretation not only is a basic exercise in the art of reading, but also tends to make the mind habitually alert to the many strains of meaning which any rich or complex passage uh, can contain. 
In this description are the ways in which a syntopical reading instructs in the art of, of reading the great books, we have emphasized only the influence on the topic under which the reading is done and the effect of reading one passage in relation to another or in relation to several distinct topics, but to assure or reinforce its instructive effect, two other factors may operate in the background of a syntopical reading. One is the whole outline of the topics, which places a particular topic in the, in the context of other topics under the same idea. The other is the introduction to that idea, which may help the reader to interpret the particular topic, thereby increasing the effectiveness of that topic as a guide to the interpretation of the works or passages referred to under it. If we turn now from the beginning reader to the more mature student or scholar, in the extreme case, a person who has read through many, if not at all, all the great books, we shall see that the syntopical reading works in a different way. We know it no longer need function in initiatively or suggestively, nor for the competent reader need it serve instructively to develop skill in the art of reading, but it does provide the occasion and the materials for a more intensive and critical reading of passages already read, and it supplements the reading of whole works independently of one another by requiring an examination of these works or passages from them in mutual relation as relevant to the same topic. It is the general experience of highly competent readers that a great book can be read through many times without the attainment of such complete mastery that the reader knows the relevance of every passage in it to every theme it touches. On the contrary, the integral reading of a great book, even when done more than once, seldom reveals even a large part of its meaning. Only the most intensive scholarly study of a particular book or author ever arrives at such mastery. Short of that, reading a great book through one or more times will inevitably leave unnoticed or, or only partly recognized many passages of critical significance to a particular theme or problem. Only when the book is read with that particular subject in mind will these passages hitherto unobserved be found. <sighs> okay. The truth of this can be verified by accomplished readers of the great books if they will examine under particular topics passages from books they have already read or even studied to some extent. Unless their previous reading of the books was done in the light of a particular in intellectual interest represented by this topic, they are likely to find some passages they never saw before, or at least never fully recognized as having the significance they take on when read syntopically. In the light of this topic and in relation to other works and passages relevant to the same theme. The syntopicon can thus serve those who have already done to a greater or less extent an integral reading of the great books. The method of syntopical reading not only provides a different and rewarding way of reading them, but also carries the study of them to deeper and deeper level levels of understanding. It overcomes the defects of the ordinary integral reading in several ways. It involves reading the great books in relation to one another uh, rather than in isolation. It supplements the knowledge of whole works by con concentrating on the significance of parts. Taking each of the 3,000 topics as the occasion for the purposeful reading in all the great books, it makes possible the close study of each work in relation to all the problem, problems or issues on which it bears. There is still another way in which the method of syntopical reading can advance the study of the great books, or rather a state, studious, studious use of them. Here the aim is not to use to study the books themselves, but to consider a problem or an issue to the problem or clarification of which they contribute. The particular problem may involve many topics in one or more chapters. It may involve a number of great ideas and many subordinate terms. The organization of the syntopicon enables the student of such a problem to discover the range of the terms and topics traditionally involved in the consideration. The references enable him to examine systematically in their chronological order or in any other, any other order he wishes. The record of Western thought concerning this problem so far is contained in the great books. The additional readings supplement those uh, material by citing other books which bear upon the problem 
more or less directly. It does not seem an exaggeration to say that a person who has done all this in topical readings suggested by the references and the additional readings on a particular problem will have a fairly adequate knowledge of that problem and its proposed solutions in the development of Western thought. The syntopicon should be able to save the person who is beginning his inquiry into a certain problem much of the preliminary labor of research and advance him rapidly to the point where he can begin to think independently about it because he knows what thinking has been done. For the scholar already advanced in his research on a given problem, it may still be possible for the syntopicon to serve some good purpose as a reminder or a check. It may even uncover ne a neglected passage or throw new light upon one by placing it in the context of other passages. What has just been said about the studious or scholarly use of the syntopicon suggests how it may serve as an instrument in teaching the great books or in using them as teaching materials. For the most part, the great books enter the curricula of schools and colleges engaged in liberal education only by way of courses in which some of these books or more of them are read integrally. Even when they are read in selections rather than as wholes, they are, for the most part, used as materials in a general course of study rather than as applicable to the study of particular subject matters. Without detracting from or competing with the unquestionable value of such procedures, the Syntopicon offers another pedagog pedagogical use of the great books. The methods of Syntopical reading makes them available in the teaching of courses concerned with particular subject matters or in the conduct of seminars devoted to the study of particular problems. In certain cases, it may encourage the reading of the great texts to, to, to place in, in place of textbooks. For a particular problem or subject matter, those name, whose name is either one of the great ideas or a major term in the inventory of terms, the Syntopicon suggests some, if not all, of the topics which deserve to be studied, and some, if not all, of the works which deserve to be read, in whole or part. It thus provides a set, a set of materials organized so as to be adaptable to the methods and interests of the individual teacher. For example, as one extreme, the teacher can use the Syntopicon merely as a guide to, supplement, to supplementary reading. At the other extreme, he can use it to construct his own set of textual materials selected from the references and the additional readings and organized in a framework of a sequence of topics. Four, the syntoptic Syntopicon as an instrument of discovery and research. What has already been said about the use of the Syntopicon by the serious student or even the advanced scholar in the sphere of a particular problem or subject matter obviously covers part of the Syntopicon's utility as an instrument of research or discovery. But there are three special types of inquiry for the pursuit of which the Syntopicon seems to be especially adapted. The first of these is the study of the history of ideas. The chapter on each of these 102 great ideas uh, present and uh, presents the record of thought in the form of references to the great books. Organized under each topic, under the references are arranged in the order in which the authors and works appear in the set of great books. And since, with few exceptions, there is a strictly chronological order, the record of thought is presented in an order suited to the historian's interest. The additional readings which supplement the great books in, in the record are also arranged chronologically. Hence, the Syntopicon provides an organization of materials eminently useful to the scholar engaged in the historical study of ideas. The second type of special inquiry concerns the thought of a single author and its historical relation to the thought of his predecessors who influenced him and the followers influenced by him. Now, okay. third type of special inquiry is limited to the thought of a particular period rather than a particular author. 
Within this limitation, uh, the historical interest may extend to all the great and the near great minds who formed the thought of this period, as well as to all the ideas with which they dealt. So far as the formative minds of the particular period are represented by authors of the great books and by other authors cited in the additional readings, the Syntopicon can assist such research instead of using its references vertically from one end to the, of the tradition to the other, as would the student of the history of an idea. The student of an epic of thought would cut through the references horizontally. He would take all the authors and books which fell within the period under consideration. He would examine the materials referenced to under every idea or topic which appeared to have been considered by the minds of the period of that period. In these three types of historical inquiry, the Syntopicon is at best an auxiliary instrument in the service of scholarship. If it proves to be more than that for the ordinary student, it will probably be less than that for the accomplished scholar whose documentary resources in a particular field are more extensive than those from which the Syntopicon is constructed. This is especially true of those problems in the history of ideas uh, which have been investigated by prolonged research, but some problems contribute to the study of these. It is even possible that the Syntopicon may an uncover or call attention to new problems or may cause the reformulation of old problems in a new way. The grand research suggested by the existence of the Syntopicon is not historical, however, but philosophical. Philosophical? Philosophical. <laughs> Stated simply, it is the project of creating in and for the 20th century a synthesis of or, 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 ah, or summation of Western thought, past and present, which will serve the intellectual needs of our time, as analogous syntheses or summations have served adequate antiquity, sorry, of our time. Uh, oh, shit. Have served antiquity, the Middle Ages, and the period of the Enlightenment. The 102 great ideas, the 1,800 other terms, and the 3,000 topics of the Syntopicon are a fair representation of the objects uh, as the materials to be found in the 443 works here published and the 2,600 other works listed in the additional readings are a fair representation of the content of Western inquiry and discussion. The Syntopicon is, therefore, an instrument adapted to the sort of research which might produce a summation of Western thought from the beginning to the present. Because the existence of the Syntopicon makes it possible and suggests that it be undertaken, the project envisaged might be called a program of syntopical research. Because the method of this research, like the method which produced the syntopicon, would be thoroughly dialectical in character, the intellectual summation, which would be its product, would be called a summa dialectica. Mortimer J. Adler, editor, Chicago, 1952. Okay? Next is the explanation of reference style, and I'll deal with that later. 